evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome around the globe to Congan Water Radio, featuring the Congan Water Health and Information International Call, where we consider, clarify, and often correct the conventional wisdom around Congan Water technology, the different machines, the science behind water types, uses, and benefits, the testing process, the maintenance and cleaning of the machines, and much, much more. We also explore a plethora of other topics as we teach, promote, and discuss the three-pronged approach to health and wellness, hydration, detoxification, and complete macro and micronutrition. I'm family physician, Dr. Lisa Battles Singletary, your virtual keto coach, and I will be joined by my co-host and fearless leader, Mr. Terrence Hope, Enagic 6A distributor extraordinaire, and together we bring you the best of both worlds. Welcome every day, everyone, to this special, special day. It is call number, hmm, let me see if I remember, you know, I always forget the number. It must be 390, no, it's call number 400, woo, 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 woo. And by special request, we're gonna talk about the Flexner report today. And actually that's not a bad, um, uh, no, I mean, not a bad. It's a kind of coincidental tie-in since today is also the first national celebration of Juneteenth. Uh, so we'll talk about how that ties in when I discuss the Flexner report. Meanwhile, uh, I want to share with you our call treasure, Mr. Terrence Hope, Enagic 6A distributor extraordinaire, the vigilant, consistent, and persistent health advocate and health influencer to the stars and to the globe, certified holistic health coach. Mr. Terrence Hope, are you with us today, sir? Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD. I just happen so much to be. <laughs> and I'm glad to be here on the Congan Water Health and Information Call here on our famous now Congan Water Radio Program. <clears throat> And as well, I'm very happy to um, connect with all of you all over the world. Welcome to all of those that I can see on the dial uh, coming in from Dubai, from India, from the United Kingdom, from Nigeria. Now we have new people in Angola, Rwanda. Um, very happy to see that as well. Wales, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland have joined us. I love it. I love to see it. It's wonderful. Um, those from the United States, and from um, Canada, uh, we've got some big distributors up in Canada and our team doing some incredible things. Um, and then of course, going off to Hawaii and then Asia uh, around the world, um, looks like we're represented. represented. Um, so much like Britain uh, boasted once uh, years ago, uh, the sun shall never set on Congo Water Radio. <laughs> so um, uh, we're glad to have you all here. And as, as well, I'm, I'm very glad to uh, uh, take this time to uh, recognize Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD, our board certified family physician, now retired, lending her time to our Congan Water Health and Information Call and our Congan Water Radio Program, and yet guaranteeing that we all know many more things about health that we need to know uh, from the medical perspective, <laughs> understanding the anatomy, understanding the, um, uh, the science behind our, our body's function, the organs function, um, and as well, the, the key things that we need to begin uh, with, which is our proper health, with proper health, uh, nutrition, hydration, and detoxification. And when we have those things in place, we have really the core of what our body needs for its proper health. I am so incredibly, um, I don't want to use that word excited, but I am excited. What can I tell you? Uh, about uh, our program today and the, um, uh, the, the subject matter of the Flexner Report. 
uh, the Flex Report is a, really a direct reflection of the work that we're doing today um, <clears throat> as we look to bring you the information that you need for the core of your well-being, for the core of your, of your health. And of course, Dr. Singletary will go more into the Flexner Report as we begin to reflect on, reflection, reflect on, um, um, pharmaceuticals. Um, today's medical industry, the industrial medical complex that we are immersed in um, and where that came from, you know, what it means and how, the, how does that tie into our, our natural health, yeah? So <clears throat> as we all know, we all talk here about the um, uh, natural uh, approach to, to health and wellness. We give you a great deal of detail with that. Um, you're gonna get to see um, uh, the two sides of the equation and um, you know, we're gonna enjoy uh, bringing that to you today so you're fully aware of where we are, what we do and <laughs> why our health is what it is and our health industry as well. Okay, so uh, welcome aboard. Thank you all for joining us, joining in. And um, <clears throat> as I always like to say, uh, we begin at the beginning. Uh, well, where's my little button? Oh, there we are. My little button is there. Okay, awesome. So <clears throat> this is the Congan Water Health and Information Call. And uh, we talk about Congan Water here. Yes, we talk about Congan Water in relation to your health and well being. And we talk about it from more of a science point of view um, that you get a thorough understanding of what it is, um, how it works within the body, and how to use it properly for your health benefits. So, um, welcome aboard. The good ship, Congan Water. <clears throat> so, change your water, change your life. That's our model here at uh, Enagic, the Congan Water Company. Yes, um, this is an example of one of the Congan Water machines, and it is known as the SD501. The SD501 has been our flagship machine, a flagship unit for the past oh, 17 years now, it's going on some time. It is a tried and true sturdy machine. It has all the features that you will find in all of our machines and particularly our new top of the line unit, the Kangen 8, which has now become extraordinarily popular. Uh, the Kangen water machines make seven different types of water. We've got Kangen water for 8.5, 9.0 and 9.5 hydration, detoxification and energy boosting. Um, we have a setting called clean water, which is really just a neutral pH water. We have acid water, which is um, also known as a beauty water. It's a beauty, it's a water we use for our skin. It's a mild acid that will kill bacteria under the pores of our skin and allow our skin then to tighten back up, giving us that smooth, clear appearance. Um, we've got strong acid water and strong, what is known as 11.5 pH water or Kangen water. Um, that's a feature that produces a medical grade hypochlorous acid. Um, it's a, it's a 2.5 pH that will kill E. coli, kill bacteria, it'll actually kill viruses on contact. So it's become very popular these days in the issue with viruses around the world and wanted to keep that under control and kill that off. Um, so um, this is our Congo water machine and uh, one of the great examples of it, the SD501. The um, <clears throat> term that we use when we refer to Congo water is electrolyzed reduced water electrolyzed reduced water. I repeat that on every call because we need to have this information ingrained in us. Other terms and other forms of description have been used um, so um, prevalently, so, so regularly that they have uh, kind of overshadowed the actual true uh, nature of Congan water in terms of its actual definition. So Congan water, that's our brand name at the Enagic Congan Water Company, electrolyzed reduced water. That is actually the science term that refers to what Congan water is. If you want to know the health benefits of a Congan water, you don't look up Congan water. Congan water is our brand name. Look up the science term that refers to it. Uh, electrolyzed reduced water. Put the subject matter that you're curious about and you'll find a plethora of information there. Molecular hydrogen is one of the major elements that is produced in our Congan water that allows your body to boost its energy levels. And we'll talk more about that later on, molecular hydrogen, yeah? So electrolyzed reduced water is produced in a process known as electrolysis. Electrolysis occurs when 
uh, electricity comes in direct contact with water. And in that process, a production of a number of antioxidant molecules are produced. This is the reason for the benefits of our Kangen water. You have antioxidant molecules within the water. You have energy producing molecules in the water produced in the process known as electrolysis. So we begin with electrolyzed reduced water. It's a water that's produced in a process known as electrolysis. Electrolysis is a, is a, is a process where electricity comes in direct contact with water. And so here we see electricity in the form of a lightning as that's what we like to call the, like the electricity in the common water machines, a mini lightning bolt coming down and striking water. When water is hit by electricity, here you have your H2O, kapow, I like to say, a water electricity hits that water and you produce a restructuring that breaks water down to various uh, elements, um, ions, molecules, new structures um, that have the antioxidant effect that I talk about so often. Hydroxide ions are one of the um, uh, ions or molecular structures that are produced. The water, H2O, is broken down into two segments. H2O is water. Here's your H from H2O. Here's your OH from H2O. It breaks down into two segments and actually causes the water to split into two different directions when it runs through our machines. And that's why you see on your unit, you've got two different spouts of the water flowing. So um, antioxidant molecules are produced in this process an array of different reactions and actions and, and reactions are occurring. And that leads us up to uh, what happens with the outcome of Kangen water. Um, <clears throat> here is something I'd like to talk about, looking at our natural environment. We're gonna talk about natural environments and we're gonna talk about pharmaceutical environments. Here we're talking about natural environments. Here is the case we're looking out at the forest in the wild. Um, if you're in the uh, parks and woods of the United Kingdom or the forests and uh, um, wildlife of the United States, you'll see these kind of animals. If you're in Africa, um, hippos and lions and tigers and llamas, if you're in Brazil, another host of um, jungle animals. But what we'll find that's consistent with all the animals that are out in the wild is that they all stay completely healthy. Now we know that animals have their own types of health issues that occur you know, um, from time to time, but overall, you're looking out at your wildlife and they continue to have healthy function. Um, they are all the same size in each species. You don't see a variation of obese deer and slender deer. Uh, they're all the same size. Um, they run, they frolic, they hop, they jump. They eat protein and fruits and vegetables, produce, and other types of wild growing grain and, 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 and vegetation. Um, so produce, protein, and water is their intake for food. <clears throat> They're getting what their body is designed to have for full nutrition. They're also existing in environments that are not farmed. We have an industrial, industrialized farming system where um, fruits and vegetables are grown in enormous plantations for the supply of food for this human population, which is touted to be somewhere around 7 billion, maybe slightly less than that over the past couple of years. Um, 7 billion people have to eat. It's a large uh, task to feed them. Uh, and so an industrialized farming system exists. Uh, that farming system, of course, is uh, uh, laid waste with the ongoing and constant planting and growing. And it costs a lot of money to provide the soil that the plants grow in with the necessary minerals in order for them to grow properly in full nutrition. That is expensive. So what happens in our industrialized um, uh, produce system? Um, cut corners are, are cut. The amount of minerals that you need in the soil for your produce to reach its full maturation of nutrition um, benefit for, for those who are eating, for the consumer, uh, becomes minimized. So it may take 60 minerals to fully fortify 
the fruits and vegetables that we're eating with all of their nutrient content. Your fruits and vegetables are pulling from the minerals and soil and can bring that to nutrients as they blossom into their you know, fruit and vegetable, yeah? So whereas it might take 60 minerals in order to um, uh, properly uh, uh, feed the soil to grow the, 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 the fruits and vegetables, they may only use three. Why? It's expensive. Three minerals might be enough for the apple to look like an apple, taste like an apple, feel like an apple. But when you eat it, you're starving because the nutrition content that it's supposed to have is not present. So you don't get what your body needs in order to take care of itself. The body is self-healing. Um, if these animals that you know, oftentimes uh, habitate the suburbs of the United States and you know, close quarters into other countries, walk through your backyard, notice this, they don't have any issues of cancers unless they're around at one of our industrial complexes. Um, they don't have any issues with cancers, no diabetes. There's no animal, uh, what do you call that, dialysis center where the animals are going and getting their blood flushed. Um, um, there's, there's no incident of heart disease. These animals you know, are born, they live the course of the life they're designed to live, and you know, when it's time for them to go, they go, right? Um, but you never see them ill at any time. Um, none of them are walking with canes. Um, there'd be another subject to find this out, but none of they, they don't, you don't even see them turn gray. Unless you have them at home with you and you're feeding them like, we, we, like you feed your pets. Your pets go through many health conditions that humans go through. Why? They're in the same environment you're in. What environment is that? They're eating pet food. Where does pet food come from? Processing. What's processed in the pro what's in there in the process of making this pet food? Chemicals, preservatives, the same thing that we're plagued with in our food system. So in the wild, the animals have what they need for full nutrition. The humans, what are we eating? From the age of what? Two years old? Prior to two years old, children, infants are eating a very good diet. Yeah, they're getting all the fruits and the vegetables and everything is, you know, mushed for them, how they, they, they whip these things in little jars and you feed your baby and they have the best diet. As, as when they get big enough, what's the first thing they get to eat? McDonald's. <clears throat> We're not even completely sure that's even food. I'll just say it. Yes, I did. You heard it here from me. There you are. It's, we're not even sure if that's even food. Those French fries don't, don't even uh, break down or decompose. You leave it out in the wild, you'll find it 10 years later in the same condition and untouched by animals, right? So <clears throat> cotton candy, uh, birthday cake, potato chips, pretzels, soda, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Sprite, Orange Crush. What are those things? Those are not, in fact, nutritious for you. And if there's no nutrition value, then what is it? It's a marketing ploy to get you to buy something for the profit of a company looking to make money. Why? Because once upon a time, you couldn't sell water. So ambitious individuals found things that you could buy, purchase, that you would consume because the food industry is the top industry in the world. No matter what's going on, everyone has to eat. Yeah? So um, <clears throat> they'll invent beverages. They'll invent food products that are not, in fact, food. I could, what do I call them? Edible consumables. Just because it can go in your mouth doesn't mean it means that doesn't mean that it belongs to your mouth. So uh, you can eat them, but they're not having any value in the body. As a matter of fact, they become very toxic, these junk foods. So you've got to eat the foods that are made for the body. Proteins, produce, water, fruits, juices made from produce, fruits, vegetables. That's about all there is to eat on the planet, really. We eat uh, protein, we eat milk, <clears throat> we drink milk. Um, but all of those were from, you know, protein, from animal, animal products, yeah? Outside of that, what is there really to eat? If you're eating anything outside of that group, produce, protein, water, fruit juice from fruits, from fruits, fruits, fruits and vegetables, you're not really eating food. That's right, I said it. <laughs> okay, so let's go beyond that. <clears throat> so the common water machines, what do they do? Um, they produce antioxidant molecules, yeah? In the process, they detox the body. Once you can detox the body, 
give it proper nutrition, keep it properly hydrated, the body has an immune system to keep itself healthy. <clears throat> Stay at that core at all times. You have the core of what your body needs to regenerate in ways it can regenerate, to stay healthy as it is to stay healthy, to heal itself when it needs healing. Uh, if there's a scratch on the finger, on the hand, we put a bandaid on there. Why? Because we know that the skin is self healing. And if we just give it time and keep it bacteria free, it can do that in a flawless way. Uh, a scratch on the, on the elbow, anywhere on the skin, the surface of the skin we know to be what? Self healing. <clears throat> yeah? Um, it's intuitive for us. If there is a uh, fracture to a bone, um, hairline or larger, if there's a full break to a bone, we, um, which is an unfortunate event, we put a cast on the bone to keep it still so that as it is the key phrasing, heals itself, it does so evenly. You get a cast, you go to the doctor, they're not doing any magic on your leg. Um, some magic, we could say, they might have to reposition it into its proper original position if it's been altered. Um, they'll give you painkillers, but not much more than that. You're going to need full nutrition, by the way, um, including all the nutrients that your bones need to build, as well as everything your body needs to work in tandem to rebuild bone. Uh, don't get a surgery and then just think magically your bones are going to regrow. It's not going to work like that. You'll have problems. Get the proper nutrition. Um, detox, hydrate, nutrition, complete health, natural healing. Your body is self-healing. So we're aware of that from the surface of, surface of the skin to the depths of the bones, but we are not really aware of that right down to the cellular, cell, cellular level of the body, which you don't realize is that throughout the entire system, this healing process doesn't suddenly halt at the border and say, okay, beyond the skin, we don't do any self-healing. Beyond the bones, which is, the, the, that, which is at the depth of your body, we don't do anything more. It's not quite the case. As a matter of fact, it's not the case, right? So... The body will heal itself when it has proper hydration, nutrition, and detoxification. Get away from those junk foods you don't need to be eating as much as possible. Keep your body toxic free. Give it full nutrition. It will take care of itself. I'm going to pause there on my um, introduction to Congan water and what it is as a detoxing water, hydrating water, um, energizing water. And I'm going to go and pass the call on to Dr. Singletary as she has much to talk to us today about um, self healing. Um, nutritional approaches to your health and um, uh, where uh, all that went over the years uh, and, the, and the knowledge base we have today. Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD, I pass the call up onto thee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hope. Thank you for those. And the, the phrases you've used are uh, consumable matter. Mm an edible matter mm. so <laughs> but yeah it all means the same thing not quite food so mm. yeah thank you for your uh your insightful comments and yeah i um really had a great great time scratching the surface of the impact of the flexner report because it is huge and as is true of many things um, in history, you can trace back amazing, like huge shifts to one individual or one pair of individuals and in their work. And just, I don't even understand how it happens like that. But um, in the history of medicine, which I've been a student of the history of medicine for a long time, and I'm going to actually in, indulge myself and share with you guys a PowerPoint that I did. In, oh, I didn't look at the year. I'm sure it's on the PowerPoint. <clears throat> but when I was getting my master's in public health, <clears throat> excuse me, I um, studied the history of science. And of course, that included the history of medicine. So walk down memory lane with me and uh, I wanna share some of the early work that I did on this topic. And that was, and I'm, you know, I'm not gonna read all these slides, but, uh, 
Uh, well, definitely not going to read that slide. I like that so, title. Was that medieval medicine? Yeah. Let me find. Oh. Oh. It had. Exciting. It had. I forgot I had effects. Your animation. Look at you. Fancy, <laughs> fancy. So medieval medicine and religion. Mm. Um, so the oh, forget the resource. They don't have that anymore. But one of the things that I really was struck with is how the 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 centers of influence for medicine as a whole have moved around the globe and not just around the globe but from you know guilds to monasteries to libraries i mean how all these different places in all these different countries are um impactful and also the increasing rapidity of discovery. That is amazing. And I wish that resource were still available because it really shows <clears throat> a timeline from ancient times to the present. And you can see how quickly things start to change and it just accelerates and accelerates and accelerates. So from the ancients, we can go back to Imhotep. And we hear a lot about Imhotep in the movies, right, the mummy, but uh, he was a real person and he had a real impact on many areas, including medicine. And I mean, they were riding on sheepskin back then, so not much survived from his writings, but, um, some of the transmissions may have survived and some of them could be, some of them are called the Edwin Smith papyrus that may have been uh, transcriptions of writings of Imhotep. Um, but in ancient times, basically the sick turned to physicians, they turned to priests, they turned to healers, uh, they went to temples, midwives, herb gatherers, barber surgeons, uh, bone setters, and the, the, um, the professions, I'm saying professions in quotes, overlap. Uh, <clears throat> for instance, uh, Asclepius uh, was a cult of healing. There were temples, he was deified, um, they used baths, prayers, sacrifices. Um, but the, look at the last three, last couple ones, dietary restrictions, exercise, entertainment. <clears throat> I think that was maybe a euphemism for uh, the temple prostitutes. <laughs> but um, uh, when I talk about, we talk about one man, also Hippocrates. Now Hippocrates, had this idea that medicine shouldn't just be a craft, but it should be learned, it should be codified, it sh standards and procedures should be established. Um, and uh, he didn't completely throw out the idea of the divine, but um, that natural things partake of divinity. And he had these ideas, I'm not gonna go into them now, but uh, that when all of these things are in balance, then there's health. And when you're out of balance, <clears throat> then that's when disease and sickness comes in. And uh, depending on what is out of balance will determine what you do to try to bring it back into balance. Galen was a father of anatomy. He did dissections. And um, so we're, we're in... Uh, 100 now, 29 AD, um, getting closer, right, to modern times. But there was this period called the medieval period. And during the medieval period, um, in uh, Europe, the, the writings were mostly done, mostly uh, 
uh, transmitted. So they were, they were collected and transmitted by the monks. And they were hidden away in the monasteries and in some libraries. But uh, one of the things that was happening during this time is that there were, oh, I think I skipped this a lot, but it doesn't matter. There were wars, right? And actually I read a couple of articles about the 10 medieval wars that changed everything. And one of the things that happened during these uh, uh, wars is all of the uh, writings were either, just, many of the writings were destroyed, but many of the writings were collected <clears throat> and carried back to Arabia. Now, um, the original writings were in Greek, right? By the time the monks were collecting them and everything, the writings, the Greek writings had to be translated into Latin. And that was happening slowly, 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 but most of the Greek writings had not been translated. And um, let me see, I was doing some more work and uh, I did a little uh, summary of the history. So during these wars, uh, the, the writings that were in Greek were taken to Byzantium, were taken to Arabia. And um, these were centuries from 500 to 1500 of, they called it the medieval period, the dark ages. Western scholarship was completely on the decline, but the Byzantines were busy getting these Greek texts and translating them. And by 1000 AD, almost the entire body of Greek scientific writings had been translated into Arabic. And by the 11th, the end of the 11th century, Arab scholars in Spain and Italy had translated the works of Hippocrates and Galen from Arabic into Latin. So we went from Greece to the, uh, the scriptoriums to Byzantium to back into Rome and the Roman Empire. So the Renaissance began and the Greek language was no longer widely understood. This was the era of medical Latin. And so there are all these Latin writings, <clears throat> but in the 1800s, we find the last medical works that were written in Latin. Now we're in the era of medical English. So that was the current chosen language for international communication of or by uh, the medical community. So uh, that, just that history fascinated me. Like all these turns of, of uh, countries and language. So, come to the new world, right? And, and I'm look, I haven't covered everything. I mean, there, there are, every country had uh, healers, right? And so we had the advantage of, um, or the disadvantage you could say, of being able to study these certain uh, documents, but uh, so much was lost, you know? but some survived and much of that made it to the new world. So in the new world, in America, we had all kinds of healers. We had chiropractic, we had homeopaths, we had naturopaths, we had um, like the barber surgeons, right? That was still a pretty gruesome, gruesome surgery was still a pretty gruesome, uh, um, undertaking, but um, in 1910, so let me see if I can share, 
I forget how to share my screen. Okay, so there's one of the medieval battles that uh, um, in the Arabic translations. But uh, there's something called the Flexner Report. And I just went to Google, and this is what I Googled here, the Flexner, F-L-E-X-N-E-R Report. And look at some of the titles just of the articles that you can find, the Flexner Report of 1910 and its impact on complementary medicine. And we're gonna look at this article. The Flexner Report, Wikipedia, we're gonna look at this article. Racial bias in the Flexner Report permeates medical education. And more and more and more, the, how the Flexner, Flexner Report, perspectives of change, how we should respond, the Flexner Report, it's just huge. So let's, let's start with Wikipedia. You know, I think this may be the first time I've actually um, directly referenced Wikipedia <laughs> on the call, but they did a good job. Okay, so what is the Flexner Report? It's a book length landmark report of medical education in the United States and Canada written by Abraham Flexner, he and his brother did this survey. Um, the report was funded by the Carnegie Foundation. And so it's also known as Carnegie Foundation Bulletin Number no. Four. And what they did was they went around, beginning in 1904, uh, to, they went around, no. not 1904, but uh, they went around to visit, I think it was 500 medical schools. So there were, there were a lot of medical schools. I'm sorry, there it is. That's what I was looking for. He visited every one of the 155 North American medical schools. So that was the United States and Canada. So they had uh, impact on both countries and eventually around the world. And it just so happened that Carnegie and Rockefeller were very much into pharmaceuticals. And uh, the Flexner having gone to Johns Hopkins, which was a German style medical education at the time was also very much uh, in line with pharmaceuticals. And so when you look at um, some of the details of the report, uh, he says things like, um, uh, he talks about the calamitous consequences when uh, the historical forms of knowledge, quote unquote, are not are being followed. So they rejected all of the um, non-pharmaceutical forms of uh, medical education and recommended that the actually they didn't even have to recommend, but they they recommended to the Carnegie Foundation, told them which schools were following the pharmaceutical path, as opposed to schools who are following homeopathic paths or naturopathic or chiropractic or other paths. And of course, what did the Carnegie Foundation do? They flooded the schools that they liked with funding, what would be today billions of dollars. And so the other schools, just waned away. They didn't get any, uh, they didn't get funding. So they lost students, they lost, um, they didn't have the, uh, the um, equipment, right? And so uh, it, it had a huge impact on the direction of medicine. 
<clears throat> Meanwhile, in Europe, uh, Europe was still embracing and studying and uh, more and more and more the herbs and the more natural approaches. And they actually made an equivalent of um, what we call the, uh, what do we, the physician's, um, physician's reference guide, the guide that has uh, all of the um, different types of medicine or pharmaceuticals, um, all the pills, all the prescriptions in one guide. Well, they have a guide uh, similar and we kind of took it, took all that information and have made a physician's guide of natural like herbs. And, um, but they had done all the studies in Europe while we were ignoring natural medicine and um, homeopathic medicine, homeopathic remedies, et cetera. So again, the, I can't even uh, emphasize the impact of the Flexner report, but back to the Wikipedia, it had, they did a really nice section called consequences of the report. To a remarkable extent, the following present day aspects of the medical profession in North America are consequences of the Flexner Report. In a very short time, medical colleges were streamlined and had curricular standard, standardized. A physician receives at least six and preferably eight years of post-secondary formal instruction, nearly always in a university setting. Medical training adheres closely to the scientific method and is thoroughly grounded in human psych physiology and biochemistry. Medical research adheres fully to the protocols of scientific research. Average physician quality has increased significantly. No medical school can be created without the permission of the state government. Likewise, the size of existing med school, medical schools is subject to state regulation. Each state branch of the AMA has over, so of course the Carnegie's funded the AMA, uh, has oversight to uh, over conventional medical schools and medicine in the US and Canada have become a highly paid and well-respected profession. Not as high as plumbers, but highly paid nonetheless. But medical school closings, this was a huge, huge impact not only on um, medical and not only on uh, what it, I'll just say it's a, it was a huge impact throughout the country throughout both countries. So um, more than half of all American medical schools either merged or closed. Uh, so tying into Juneteenth, today's holiday, today's celebration, the impact on African-American doctors and patients. Flexner advocated closing all but two of the historically black medical schools. As a result, only Howard and Meharry were left open while five other schools were closed. Flexner's view was that black doctors should only treat black patients and should serve roles subservient to white physicians. The closure of the five schools and the fact that black students were not admitted to many US medical schools for the next 50 years has contributed to the low numbers of American born physicians of color and the ramifications are still felt more than a century later. Additionally, Flexner's findings restricted opportunities for African-American physicians in the medical, medical sphere. Even the Howard and Meharry schools struggled to stay open following the Flexner report, having to meet the institutional requirements of the white medical schools, reflecting a divide in the access to healthcare between white and African-Americans. 
Following the Flexen Report, African-American students sued universities challenging the precedent set by Plessy v. Ferguson. However, those students were met from opposition from, were met by opposition from schools who remained committed to segregated medical education. It was not until 15 years after Brown v. Board of Education in 1954 that the American Association of Medical Colleges, the AAMC, ensured access to medical education for African-Americans and minorities by supporting the diversification of medical schools. Related to his adherence to germ theory, Flexner argued that if not properly trained and treated, African-Americans posed a health threat to middle and upper class whites. The practice of the Negro doctor will be limited to his own race, which in turn will be cared for better by good Negro physicians than by poor white ones. But the physical well being of the Negro is not only of moment to the Negro himself. 10 million of them live in close contact with 60 million whites. Not only does the Negro himself suffer from hookworm and tuberculosis, he communicates them to his white neighbors, precisely as the ignorant and unfortunate white contaminates him. Self-protection, not less than humanity, offers weighty counsel in this matter. Self-interest seconds philanthropy. The Negro must be educated, not only for his sake, but for ours. He is, as far as a human eye can see, a permanent factor in the nation. Also, Wikipedia chronicles the impact on alternative medicine, the impact on osteopathic medicine, and the impact on the role of the physician. So I refer you to those articles. But yes, that is scratching the surface of the story of the Flexner Report and its impact on particularly medical education, but medicine uh, now worldwide, I would say. Indeed. <clears throat> yes, indeed it does. And uh, Dr. Singletary, I'm, I'm very thankful that you have um, uh, broached this subject and brought it to the fore, given us some uh, information as far as the background of uh, health history throughout the world, um, and um, hopefully begin to make a household um, term that we use on a regular basis as the Flexner Report. <clears throat> I think as we can look at things like this, we get to understand the origins of how we came from where we were to where we are, why, the reasons for that, and, um, and what the results are. You know, one of the things that uh, has always stuck out to me over the uh, years as I became aware of the Flexner Report was looking at um, a comparison um, you did speak about many of the, the medieval practices and uh, different types of things that were going on over the years in, in terms of uh, health. Um, I did it particularly like the contrast you made between the um, direction in the United States and Canada following a pharmaceutical pathway and comparing that to the pathway that was going on in Europe where they followed an herbal pathway. Now, what are we looking at here? <clears throat> Where these are two ways that we can approach a person's health and healing. Um, we end up with an encyclopedia of medicine. I'm gonna call it medicine, so we clear what we're saying. Uh, how to approach a person's health needs? We can see already that there was more than one way, and there was a great deal detail of that. Yeah, uh, we look at the pharmaceutical approach. Um, and what appears to be financial interests. Um, we look at the herbal approach and it appears to be more of a health interest for the people. But here you're looking at an encyclopedia 
of health approaches using herbal medicines. So what do we mean by herbal medicines? We're taking the actual plant element as it grows, develops in, in the world, and we're using that directly in its original form to give to a patient who has a health issue, yeah? Now, <clears throat> what you're saying there, and we can look at more details to find that actual you know, journal so people can have a reference of it, is that there's an encyclopedia for using herbal medicine for one's health. And you went further to say that that encyclopedia was then copied by the American pharmaceutical uh, industry and implanted, of course, with its pharmaceutical approach. <clears throat> um, so now they have, okay, what you use for, for different things. Of course, they won't have to do that anyway, because if you're gonna to begin to give people pharmaceutical synthesized um, medical treatments, synthesized medical treatments, you're gonna to have to have a procedure in how to give that. Um, but <clears throat> for many years, uh, an argument has been said that, well, a natural approach is old wives tales, mm -hmm. um, uh, quackery and wackery, um, uh, uh, fake medicine, I guess I'll use that, you know, but no, we're looking at actual medical study, uh, an encyclopedia, a direct approach to dealing with people's chronic illnesses. And here were your answers, yeah? Um, now we've got a, uh, a, 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 a copy of that in pharmaceuticals as well. Um, you know, which one has the best benefits? <clears throat> when we look at it without having to broach the, um, the profit, uh, uh, mm. uh, margin uh, and the profit inspiration for working with that. Um, which one will allow uh, a person to recover from their health issues and go on and live a life that's you know normal? The whole idea of having a medicine should be so that your body can heal. <clears throat> um, if what if we reflect on some of the things I spoke about in terms of the body being self healing seen that example of even the animals in the wild that live around us all the time. Uh, we as the uh, top of the food chain, they as not supposed to be as smart as us, but however, they live their lives to the full. Um, while humans in the homes are uh, suffering from chronic illnesses, and they're also plagued with um, the use of pharmaceutical medicines. Now, if I take a medicine naturally grown, that has been studied and proven to be effective, um, and I give it to someone and they recover, I know I have a great result. Now, if I take the element that I might be able to isolate and say, well, this particular element in the papaya is responsible for the improved uh, gut microbiome, then let me take that and give it to the patient and let me put it in a form that they can absorb it in or they can ingest it in because there is a dynamic of various elements going on in the papaya using papaya as an example. And within the papaya, there is that element that has the healing factor, but that element works in combination with all the other factors in the papaya fruit itself. It's okay. not independent, it's a unit. <clears throat> now, in pharmaceuticals, I will say, okay, we have identified the healing factor in the papaya. Well, first off, why take it out of the papaya? <laughs> well, I just leave it there. Why do you have to remove it? Well, if we take it out, we can make it more effective. Oh, really, can you? How are you going to do that? Well, we'll take it out and uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Right? So what are they doing? You can't write a prescription for papaya. <laughs> the right. And there we go. So we're going to go to that. So now the element within the papaya uh, functions well, and it's already proven. I bet you will find that proof in the encyclopedia that was produced by, I'm gonna call it the medical encyclopedia for herbal medicine in Europe. Yeah. So it's done, it's complete, no more reason. As a matter of fact, did the pharmaceutical approach have to study the papaya and find the element to then extract it? Or did they find it in the encyclopedia over in, um, in, in Europe and say, well, we'll just copy it out. So now Ooh. what are we doing? In the, in the pharmaceutical, we're gonna take that same element yeah, 
that we found in the papaya that was proven to be effective. And now we're gonna, we're gonna give that to the patient, but we've got to put in a structure. Uh, it was in a structure in the papaya, we're gonna create a new structure, yeah? So here's your papaya structure, and here's the, uh, here, here's the counterfeit structure. So now we're gonna take something in, or synthesize structure and, and put this element in here, and we have to put something around it. Let's say I'm making an artificial papaya, I'm going far, but I'm just gonna give you an analogy of, of pharmaceuticals, a new structure just as the papaya as a structure. But I'm gonna take that element from papaya, put it in this new pharmaceutical structure, and there'll be different types of chemical combinations in there. And then I'll give it to you. I say, take this, it should help. But what do you get behind that? The pharmaceutical structure wasn't designed by nature to host that healing element. And the pharmaceutical structure is using elements that <clears throat> they're telling you are harmful. So take this pill to help with your uh, chronic um, uh, uh, resp respiratory issues. It may help with your respiratory issues. However, we have found that it will cause kidney failure, heart stoppage, problems breathing that could become fatal, um, uh, liver cancer, you know, what do they say? Uh, some some, some bone cancers have occurred. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. Apparently, it's not right for anybody. That <laughs> list that you just read off to me tells me it is too high of a risk. The person may be having some, 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 some breathing problems, but they do not have you know, bone cancer, bladder cancer. Uh, what's that one uh, with the, what's, what's the, the, the cancer with the, um, with, with the pancreas? Pancreatic cancer. Uh, <laughs> you know, I knew you'd get it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, because they, they don't have any of these other issues, but now you're, you're introducing the threat, the potential, you know, problem. And then, of course, many people do have these problems. How do we know this? Because we have family and friends who suffer from pharmaceutical use. Um, we have people who have gone into litigation lawsuits against pharmaceutical companies. And of course, this year, you'll hear from the Food and Drug Administration that this list of pharmaceuticals are beneficial and approved and good to go and given to the, the, to the larger population. Next year, um, Betterman and Betterman is saying, if you've been injured by this uh, pharmaceutical, come see us and we'll, we'll, we'll take up your case. So this year, it is approved by the FDA. Yeah, I said that. It, that's where it comes from, right? It's approved by the FDA. What, what, what do you want me to say? That's where it came from. I can't say that. I can't say that. That's where it came from. It was approved by the FDA. Next year, it's in, lit it's in litigation. And that's consistent. And now we have the, all these television commercials <clears throat> that will say, you know, while they're giving us the beautiful music, the wonderful, beautiful lady walking through the green grass, the family smiling and laughing together with beautiful, you know, sounds behind them, you know, that take this pill and it may kill you. And we're not supposed to hear that. Well, apparently some people don't because you still take it. But what, do you, what, what else, what other course do you have? This is what you've been given. And why have you been given this? So I like in the future, even as we go on to make this maybe a part of a theme that we might do, Dr. Singletary, where we talk more about those things that are in that European uh, herbal and medicine uh, encyclopedia that have been used successfully over the centuries or you know, whatever, and, or decades, and, 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 and have shown uh, to be effective. And if we come through the 1800s, um, landing into the early 1900s, where it's not only effective, but being studied in medical school, many of the HBCUs were studying the pharmaceutical, uh, the, the herbal approach uh, to medicine. And it was those schools that were shut down because they could not get what they call accreditation. So the, uh, the gentleman that you mentioned uh, was it the Ford Foundation? Was it uh, was it the, uh, was it J.P. Getty? Carnegie wrote Carnegie and Rockefeller. Um, Carnegie and, and Rockefeller, you know, <clears throat> with, with their approach, also were able to uh, to create um, accreditation. Was that word even in existence prior to them saying it? You know, <laughs> accreditation. You know. You, you have to you know what other word wasn't in existence. It, it came uh, with the Flexner report, the gold standard. Now let's get to that. Let's get to on. that. So 
Wow, the gold standard of medicine. So now um, uh, you have to get approved by a, a large financial interest that's dominant, that's going to now create an entire industry, um, create a, an approval board to say whether you can even be in, in, in a medical school or not, um, fund other schools that are choosing to follow their way. And I'm sure there was probably no um, financial incentive in that process. Um, but other schools that chose to go that way as well in terms of pharmaceutical to the point where every new medical student is, want, is going to want to go, to go to this school. I once said to one of the deans from Harvard University, I said, I said, well, you know, who said that Harvard was the best school in the world? You know, who said that that name meant you were the smartest person? Who said this, that, and the other? Somebody came up with that and sold it to the whole world. And you might have a very good um, academic program, you know, but what you have on top of that is a veneer that says that you are the gold standard of the educated individual. And if you go to this school, Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Princeton, uh, yeah, Brown, uh, University of Pennsylvania, was it the Seven Sisters? Uh, if you go to these schools, you are legend. You are the best, yeah? Um, well, who said that? And then throughout the country, those schools who are the best, I'm sure are doing the things that the financial interests like, like to see. I'm gonna just throw that out there as well. Um, and so, what truly is best? What worked well? So I, I'd like, as we make a, maybe perhaps a theme of this going forward, um, looking at different forms of medical approach from an herbal perspective prior to the 1900s and their effectiveness, um, looking at pharmaceutical approaches that came up later on um, and do you know, a, a, a cross comparison. I'm gonna tell you this, that's right. I'm gonna say it right here on the Congo Water Radio Call. We can look at the incidence of the exponential increase of various chronic illnesses over the past 50 to 60 years and see a steady pattern of that increase. We can look at that same pattern for diabetes, heart disease, <clears throat> high blood pressure, kidney failure, and go backwards prior to the 1950s and look at the uh, uh, st st statistical maps across the country and maybe even around the world. And what you're gonna see is a decrease in the number of these chronic illnesses. And then of course, an increase in the other way. What is the difference? Uh, uh, well, our nutrition base, um, our um, uh, uh, food choices, um, our medical approach, all these things are working hand in hand, yeah? Well, what they will say, and this is a part of it, a part, right? But what they will say is <clears throat> the difference is due to the fact that we can identify and detect those diseases better these days. So they were going undetected in the past. Oh yeah? That's what they'll say. Oh yeah? And I'll say, so, oh yeah. So yeah, so we have to spend more on the testing so that we can keep detecting these things. Yeah. What do they call that? Anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal evidence is where there is report, there are reports of health incidents um, that only go on between a community or by uh, by word of mouth or maybe by, you know, uh they're 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 being shared, but they're not being <laughs> accredited, you know, or being documented by um, the larger uh, publications or media outlets. I'll go there, you know, and, you know, I'll use an anecdotal piece of evidence. You know, I remember asking my parents and grandparents, how you like that? That's right. I'll go there. And, um, you know, what was it like when they were growing up, <clears throat> you know, for my mother in the 1930s, my grandmother, she was born in what, 1903? Yeah, you know, um, and did we see these types of incidents of disease throughout the community? These days, you can go to your church. Here you go, some anecdotal evidence, right? And you'll <laughs> find the average person having, what, diabetes, high blood pressure, and every so often you hear about people with cancer, right? Uh, kidney, things are going on. Um, but if you did the same um, survey amongst your family, friends, and community in 1920, 1940, 1950, you didn't find the same thing. 
my, I remember my mom said to me, she said, well, you know, when I was a kid, you know, people didn't have like heart disease and high blood pressure and kidney failure and cancers. As a matter of fact, maybe cancer you might hear about on the news uh, uh, regarding a, a Hollywood superstar or something. If something that would happen over there and amongst those you know, big, big people, but it wasn't in your community at all. You know, flash forward to the 1980s, 90s, 2000s. Yeah, it's here in large number. The average person, as a matter of fact, they're calling it what? In the black church, they call it a black disease, right? Well, you know, in the black community is it's prevalent that diabetes and high blood pressure, they're prone to that. Really? Let me see the same thing in the 1950s. What's today, June, Juneteenth? Are those the same slaves from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s that did that hard labor out there in the, in the plantations? Those people had high blood pressure, kidney failure and heart disease, diabetes, really, really? Ah, you know, that's, that's interesting, Mr. Hope you say that because you reminded me of, um, I was the last on-site physician at Bethlehem Steel when they changed corporations. Um, and because this new corporation was buying them out, uh, I had to do physicals on every single person on site and um, include executives and workers. And let me tell you, the, the, the workers, they were men of steel. I mean, steel. their muscles, their cardiovascular systems. I mean, they, some of them were climbing 30 stories of steps to get to their work site every day. They, <laughs> I mean, they were amazing, their physiques. The executives were puffy and blow they were bloated they were terrible heart condition their veins bursting on their you know their little petite petechiae on their faces and I mean, overeating cholesterols were horrible um Wetness. you know it was like oh, okay i see it i, I, <laughs> I see you saw it. some prime health specimens among the workers yeah, it was it was beautiful. It was, I mean, you know, just the the um, one of the things that I was told in medical school is the reward for good work is more work, and I found that to be true. But um, in the physical realm as well, when when you do more physical work, your body rewards you because it gets it sure, it sure does, and of course, as long as you've got proper nutrition along the way, you gotta to have continue to fuel nutrition. and feed those muscles as they're growing. The more work you do, the stronger you will get. And we can do, we can go into that. And that's gonna take another angle if I go that way. But um, I'm gonna make sure that we know that, uh, let everybody know that we can go into Q and A. Uh, I do see some chat, you know, comments here on the side. And if you have a question, go ahead and raise your, raise your hand. Um, there's a little icon down there where <clears throat> you can click that. We'll see your hand is raised. Uh, we'll bring you onto the call, or uh, we will allow you to unmute, which would be a nice feature, um, if I can get to it. I think I can. And um, you can ask your question. Of course, we've gone to a lot of information. And um, I do want to show this one picture. Sure. Mm -hmm. Of uh, the two encyclopedias, right? The complete. <clears throat> human, Ooh, uh, you've got that resource here on hand. Yeah, the complete German Commission monograph, monographs. But look at what's at the top. Who brought it here? The American Botanical Council. <laughs> so even if you try to buy the German book, it's going to be stamped American something. And, but this. So is tell me about this. This is the Herbal Encyclopedia from that the German that that was done in Europe. I wonder what year it was done. It I guess that would say why it has American on it, because prior to a certain year, it certainly would not have. This is the PDR, the Physician's Desk Reference for Herbal Medicine. Ah. And most, if not all of this, was taken from this, because they did the research. So so on one side is, is the German, um, on the other side is the American, but both noise coming in standby okay. i got it okay thank you and we're back 
So um, could you put that PowerPoint up one more time, Dr. Singletary, that slide? Mm, let's see, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're asking nice, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you go full screen, um, slideshow? I'm, I'm, uh... Oh, wrong way, sorry. But that is uh, awesome and amazing to see and to have a reference of the complete German commission is that E monographs, mm. Ther mm. therapeutics. So yeah, for us to have the reference and actually it's good for us to keep in our, in our own library, uh, but we might want to um, take a look at those things that were said to be um, um, effective. So we are here on the Congo Water Health Information Call. We are going to health information, which is why we're talking about the Flexner Report today. Um, we're talking about uh, natural approaches to medicine. Uh, we're going to go into more detail about that in the future. Um, those things that have even been um, uh, published as uh, and studied uh, clinically for effective uses um, and the contrast regarding pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical approaches, uh, the change that occurred that brought that about uh, led by something called the Flexner Report. Uh, where uh, Rockefeller and I believe you said J.P. Getty was that J.P. Getty or is it uh, no, Carnegie. Carnegie Carnegie and uh, and and uh, Rockefeller and their financial interest in the United States in the early 1900s somewhere between 1900 and 1910 or so shifting things where the uh, herbal um, medicine approach was studied in medical school as a matter of fact as a medical doctor you would learn these things um, and you would be able to practice medicine. Uh, with that knowledge and medical approach, the shift from using herbal medicine that occurred that then brought about the pharmaceutical industry and um, a removal of the herbal approach. So what we're saying is for many um, uh, decades now, herbal medicine has been called uh, false medicine. What we're saying is it was very much identified as true medicine used in medical schools and very effective and in medical practice. And that gives us uh, an opportunity to take a harder look at pharmaceuticals, what they are, how they affect our bodies, uh, why they've come to be, and really truly are they truly beneficial. You know, so here on the Congo Water Health Information Call, we want you to know what Congo Water is, how it works within the body, how to use it properly. We want you to understand your body better. We want you to understand what um, health benefits there are for having full nutrition, hydration, and detoxification. And we are open to taking your questions and different subject matter giving you the references and science that you can look for yourself to understand what these different elements are that we talk about. Congen water is an electrolyzed reduced water. Electrolyzed reduced water, as I mentioned before, look up that term when you wanna understand what its benefits are. Understand nutrition, um, and make sure that you're getting those supplements you need for full nutrition. Congen water is the best water in the world. And at the same time, you have to eat. So we wanna make sure you know what things that are beneficial for you to eat. Make sure you're getting supplementation as in our society, it is very necessary and letting your body um, thrive, be healthy and letting you be all that you are designed to be, a healthy, self-healing, uh, thriving individual here on our planet earth as we look to seek, pursue and enjoy truth, justice, health and happiness and the, um, <laughs> the godly way. So um, I see a hand is raised somewhere throughout the well, uh, globe. Um, Reginald had was unmuted for a second mm -hmm. and I don't know if that was an accident or if he really wanted to jump in so um if he could let us know then that would be great but while we're waiting to hear if Reginald really meant to do that I see an elbow hmm okay but we'll go to Vernita uh, who is already unmuted and ready to go welcome to the call Vernita well, thank you so much. As always, uh, wonderful, wonderful information and uh, happy Juneteenth to all. I, um, <clears throat> I'm on my phone because on my computer, uh, my connection is slow or something. Unstable, that's the word. It's unstable. But anyway, there's a comment somebody made about how harm was spelled or how it was defined <clears throat> in the comment. And it flashed too quickly for me to get to the bottom of it. But um, that, and then on the replay, will I be able to see the comment or no? 
No, um, you don't see the comments on the replay. But I can but, see it here. Okay. Someone made someone made a comment. It says um, they took the word pharmaceutical and broke it down into uh, parts. So it says P uh, dash, and then so it says P, and then harm, and then a pseudical. Uh, and she's and they're saying that the word harm is spelled out for you within uh, the word pharmaceutical. You know, and of course, harm you know, is medicine, our middle name, right? Harm is the middle name. <laughs> well, we know that all too well, you know, and we know okay. that the uh, the medical um, oath is supposed to be do first, do no harm. But that was a good little uh, insight, you know. So you're saying. Okay, say it one more time. The P that the that word. That harm is in the middle of the word pharmaceutical. So if you spell it out, P H A R, P H A R M A C E U T I C A L, that's the word pharmaceutical. You can take P dash. Okay, I didn't know how to spell pharmaceutical. Is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Thank you. I like sure. it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh oh. She had another thought. I saw it. Oh. Um. We were talking about who said that uh, Harvard or some Ivy League school, who said that they were the best? I did say that. Yeah, I did say and, that. <clears throat> yeah. And I was going to say, all right, two, two things. Like my mama would say, it's a po dog that don't wear, wag his own tail. Who's going to wag his own A po dog. It's a po dog that don't wag his own tail. So yeah. they had to say about themselves. It's like in uh, the book of John in the Bible, John said that he was a disciple that Jesus loved. Now who said yeah. that? John. <laughs> That's right. But so you know, look, I'm writing this book. Family. This is my this is my chapter. <clears throat> yeah, so it's my book. Mm -hmm. And if I want to say I'm the disciple that Jesus loved, okay. But the same thing with the Harvard School or whatever school that yeah. said that they were the best. They, they did, right? They did. They did. There you are. <laughs> so I see some more hands raised as well. Make sure we get around the okay. globe here. All right. You said something, Mr. Hope, that reminded me also of um, a Bible verse. Uh, Revelation 22, 2. And it talks about in the midst of the street of it, well, it talks about the tree. It talks about a tree and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. It didn't say that the one extract or the one substance within the leaf. It said the leaves, like it's, you need the whole leaf yeah. for the healing. It, you know, it doesn't say that's, that's, like I said, it just reminded me of that verse. Well said, well said. So we've got Antoine. And we're giving him a, um, yes. a video. Uh, this, this is me, Antoine. Hi, how are you? Hi, all uh, right. Firstly, I want to uh, thank you both, uh, Mr. Hope and Ms. Dr. Singletary, uh, mm -hmm. for your information. And I really, uh, I'm impressed with your knowledge, uh, Mr. Hope. Uh, I like the way you presented yourself and you seem to be very thorough in what you know. I was kind of interested What's your background? Where, are you a former doctor or? Mm, interesting. Or, um, so I, I'm a certified holistic health coach um, from the Institute of Holistic Health uh, in California. And I, um, I have a long history of interacting with herbal approaches to health or natural approaches to health. And that's what led into what I became, I guess, here in life. So uh, when I was in college, my father had been diagnosed with cancer. <clears throat> uh, he had a very large tumor within his body. I recall him telling me he was about 22 pounds. And um, he wanted to do some kind of natural approach to his uh, healing. I happened to have come across uh, a, a nutritionist who was using a detox and nutrition method to help cancer patients. I brought them to my father and his wife. Um, they sat down together and listened to the gentleman speak and they purchased these health products. And within about a nine month period, my father's cancer had been eradicated. Um, that happened when I was in college. Um, that caught my attention. <clears throat> 
And it said to me at that time that people um, can find a natural way to heal and people don't have to suffer and die from even the worst chronic illnesses. So um, I was one that when I heard about something that was good, I'd like to tell everybody, you know? So yeah. at that time I told everybody, family and friends, what my father had done and how they could likely recover from their chronic illnesses, whatever it was. Um, 10 years later, I met the civil rights activist and actor comedian, Dick Gregory. Um, I was brought to him because I had mm. developed uh, a knowledge base on herbal approaches and some natural approaches, some of which that he was trying to use for his own issues. Um, and they thought I could help Dick Gregory. Um, it turned out that um, um, I became one of five of his health consultants at that time. That was uh, 1999, 2000. And he was um, 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 diagnosed with uh, cancer himself at that time. Uh, I think also non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and a kind of colon cancer. Um, over the next year or so, he too recovered from his uh, cancer issue and went on to live another, what, 17 years cancer-free. Um, and, um, you know, much of that was never publicized regarding him, but that was the case. So um, I, I met individuals, actually my, one of my sisters actually first introduced me to the concept of Congan water. Um, and between that and meeting um, other health uh, professionals who were using Congo water for uh, others health benefits, as well as information I got from other members of the um, health consultation team from Dick Gregory, uh, um, I uh, networked and learned more about Congo water. Um, I would later learn about nutrition from a Dr. Joel Wallach, um, and thereby was able to put together a full circle understanding of health approaches. So for years, I had seen so many different types of alternative medicines and I'd seen them work effectively. I, I'd seen people recover from cancers. Uh, I would recommend things as I saw them. I got involved later on with condom water and then nutrition. So with Dr. Wallach, once I understood full nutrition, it made everything that I had ever seen over those 20 years or so makes sense. Um, as long as you had full nutrition and detoxification, your body was likely to recover because it was self-healing. And so now today, I combine all of that knowledge, hydration, uh, nutrition, detoxification, to help people become whole, understanding that the body is self-healing, and that if you give the body what it was always designed to have at the beginning, maybe even some of those herbal remedies that were uh, a research, uh, clinical, clinic, clinically reviewed, and um, published, um, you will have what your body needs to stay healthy, be healthy, and go on and thrive in your life. So that's my, my background and how I came to be. <clears throat> Thank you, very thorough. I'm on the line from my daughter. She heard you up. She was on the line with you. Okay, your daughter's uh, Terry, on the line as well. Terry Johnson, she was on the line with you. Uh, and with Tasha, Natasha, and um, she told me about it. And I, I was blessed to be able to get some water yesterday. And um, I plan, we plan to be jointly purchasing one of the machines. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing herbal products for years, uh, supplements. Mm -hmm. When I saw that back in the early uh, 80s, seeing harm in pharmaceutical, I was done. I mean, <laughs> they spent it's right in front of you, harm, and we're supposed to take it. So I'm not uh, naive <clears throat> to the system and the games people play. However, uh, when I heard about this water from my daughter, we we rushed out yesterday and was blessed with some. But we'll be see you'll be seeing more uh, of us. Um, and God bless you both because knowledge is power. And, mm -hmm. and if you know better, you do better. You would think people would do better, but some mm -hmm. people see harm and they just overlook it. But however, those who want better would do better. And mm -hmm. um, God bless you both. And you'll be hearing from us. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. You Thank know, you. and that um, was a very, very uh, important point. Uh, you have to want to do better. Mm -hmm. It's not even just enough to know. Mm -hmm. But and, and, and I could say this, I understand why people 
gravitate to the pharmaceutical approach. Um, in the United States, in Canada, many places around the world, um, the pharmaceutical approach is medicine. It is all that we know. It is all that the average person knows. You grow up with that. Listen, when I was a child, I, my mother uh, took me for a walk. And I walked outside and I saw the fire truck go by. She said, okay, that's the fireman, that's the policeman, that's the barber, that's the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, you know? So you get to know who everybody is, yeah? And, and then you grow up with that. So we know who the doctor was, this is their job. So if you go through your entire life and that's all you know, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna, you go there because that's where you're gonna get the best benefits from. But if you get to see a backstory that you get to understand there was more to medicine than what you saw growing up, then you get to understand something better, something, something more, in, more improved, something more beneficial. But it's really sometimes very difficult to get to that point, to, to, to forego everything that you ever saw to be the life and the world as it is, as it is supposed to be, and find out some of those things, you know, uh, may not be what they say they are, and may not be fully beneficial. You know, and so it's a big jump for someone to say, okay, well, I'm not going to go to the doctor with the white uh, uh, schmuck and the uh, stethoscope um, and get what he has, you know, when he has all this great schooling, quotes, nice, got great schooling, um, and he's gone all the, the best medical schools and all the best, you know, research training, and, you know, he's certainly well versed in what he's talking about, you know, but if we look at um, the change that regards the flexible report, we get to understand there were many things that were taken out and taken away from the medical curriculum so that this doctor with all the knowledge that he has will just that never have any idea that there are things he doesn't know and doesn't know he doesn't know. And so then we are the other side of the, 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 the paradigm that comes to that them for, for help. You know, but what we get to see certainly are the results. Someone said, well, first do no harm and P farm, you know, pharmaceuticals is a term. You know, that the word, that the term harm is within that, you know, coincidence, mm, who knows, right? But there it is. But we do know that we've seen a lot of things in our, in our, in our communities, in our environments, amongst our family and friends. And over the past maybe 30 years or so, um, <clears throat> people saw the result of being harmed by the, the effects of pharmaceuticals. I, I forego calling it side effects. They're effects. You take it, this is something that can happen and actually oftentimes does. Well, you know, they got tired of being sick all their lives. And they got tired of being sick. How do I say? They got sick and tired of being sick and tired. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And they and because they're seeing cause and effect, I'm taking these pills. I'm not, they're not getting better. They went to seek out a better way. And that became an, an entire growing, call it movement, if you will, throughout the United States and perhaps Canada, where people began to gravitate towards herbal medicines find their own way. And one might say, okay, they're self-medicating. How safe is that? Well, you know, they want to find a way that's natural and they don't want to be, get hurt by you, the pharmaceutical you know, company. And, 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 you know, and so one has to figure there's got to be a better way. There is certainly some corruption that goes on with, with pharmaceuticals. You know, I mean, just to what degree are we on? Uh, that's, that's a blanket statement to make. Maybe I shouldn't make it, but, you know, there's something that's got to be going on where there's such huge profits and, and no gains um, in, in people's health. Matter of fact, there's a there's a degradation of health over time. So and, and people can see that, you know. We unfortunately, you know, watch our family and friends suffer and die, you know, from the very same illnesses that are supposed to be studied on a daily basis for the past 50 years. And if one can tell me that the greatest minds are at the helm of studying and doing this research, and they're not able to come out with an outcome that's beneficial. I have a problem with that. I'm sorry to say it. Yes, that's right. I've got a problem with that. Um, you can go and do your research and not find an answer. And then when I ask you if, the, if you find an answer, you can just tell me, well, well, we just don't know. We just don't know. So we just don't know, but we're working on it. Our great minds work on it. Your great minds not getting the job done. And there are too many people suffering and dying from this. So I can't accept that. If I have to do a job and you ask me to, and to come and do a job for you and I can't get it done, I can't tell you, well, I just don't know. I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. I just, but you hired me. Are you going to continue to pay me to do this? Or are you going to say, well, okay, this is not, this is not acceptable. You're going to say it's not acceptable. Pharmaceuticals are not acceptable to me. The research that leads to the lack of answers is not acceptable to me. Even this more than that, Mr. Holt, uh, medical errors are 
in hospital medical errors in hospitals, I believe are the third leading cause of death in this country. And we're not held account, we doctors are not held accountable for that. But we are not only not helping a large number of patients, but we are harming, there you go with the P harm, harming them uh, with um, our pens, with our, you know, with prescriptions, with, with uh, nosocomial infections, with, with uh, miscommunication of records of allergies of sensitivities of, of you know it's 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 crazy no there's no other profession that has the protection that the medical profession does i believe well and on that note um if we have any more questions from um our worldwide audience we're very welcome to take those um provide more references for you for the future You've got certain homework and certain references to review on your own. You have the Flexner Report, F-L-E-X-N-E-R. Was that? That's correct. Uh, you've got uh, electrolyzed reduced water. Uh, you have the encyclopedia um, to review on herbal medicines. Um, and uh, there is a great deal that you can come to understand and um, enjoy a wealth of information for uh, your health and that of your family and friends. Uh, Dr. Singter, I do see um, from overseas in London, we have a... I was wondering if we would hear from Hyatt today. <laughs> welcome aboard Hi. from, uh, yes, from uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, welcome, Hyatt. Glad to have Hi, your thank question. Thank you, Hope, <clears throat> and thank you, Dr. Lisa. Yeah, it is true, as you say, Dr. Lisa and Hope, that um, I have witnessed from my family and myself and uh, people around me that uh, people are getting mistreated as a result of that their life have declined uh, including quality of life so this is something that we do not talk about loudly I, you know I was brought up in Sweden it, it is more, more common in Sweden my uncle they removed the good kidney and left the bad one you know uh, a friend of mine, she got surgery and they, she ended up being uh, paralyzed and developed a spinal cord injury C1. You know, mm. uh, a mother of two kids and a, and a husband. You know, and then you have um, another family members who have died of cancer. But, you know, my auntie, especially who lived in London, uh, was abusing morphine, like she was drinking it, like she was drinking coffee, seriously, and, <laughs> and to the degree where her kidney was shut up. So this is, uh, I don't think uh, anybody uh, should, um, uh, you know, just accept whatever treatment they get. They need to question, they need to find alternative solution before even considering the invasive um, aspect of, um, of treatment. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, um, uh, I have to shoot. But uh, yeah, that is an input for me. Thank you so much. It was extremely valuable uh, information you have provided, Hope. Thank you. Thank you, Hayat. I bless you, Hayat. Thank you, yes. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm sorry. I know <clears throat> people that, um, <clears throat> if they have to go into surgery, they'll take magic marker and, uh, you know, write not this leg or not this side or, you know, so like just to, just because yeah, yeah, yeah. that happens yeah. so often. All right. No, Dr. Singh, I, I see more people unmuting. If they want to, if they have a question, they can certainly ask. Um, so um, we've pretty much come to the uh, end of our call today. Uh, if anyone has further questions, you can certainly raise your hand before we, we, we roll out. Um, and the uh, calls uh, information uh, will be available on YouTube later on. Uh, so you'll see postings of that. Um, but if you have a question, sure, we'd love taking the questions and comments as we go. 
uh, out the door here today, Saturday, uh, June 19th, uh, 2021, here on the Congo Water Health and Information Call here on Congo Water Radio. And um, Dr. Singletary. Mm -hmm. I have a special treat for those of you who made it to the end of the call. <clears throat> I want to know if who of you, who among you knows the real story behind Juneteenth <clears throat> and why it would possibly, okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Yesterday, a lot of people had the day off because of Juneteenth being a federal holiday now and some companies anticipated the legislation. So they gave people the day off. And so I heard a lot of people on the radio saying, today's Juneteenth, June 18th. And, you know, so they're immediately, I know they have no clue uh, what the day is. And then other people were saying, well, it should be called Emancipation Day or it should be called, you know, like it shouldn't be called Juneteenth. And I was thinking it absolutely should not be called Emancipation Day if you know the story. I mean, if you're tying it to the Emancipation Proclamation, you know, like what? So anyone who will tell me, and you can tell me by texting me, by emailing me, or by um, sending information to Mr. Hope, the first person who could tell me why I thought in my mind that Emancipation Day is not a good name for Juneteenth, or, you know, because of the story, the real story behind Juneteenth, I will send you a gift. I have it all picked up. All I, so what you have to do is, like I said, either message or email or text um, KW nation7 at gmail.com that's Congo Water Radio or all the other ways you can communicate with us Mr. Hope will tell us in a second um, or those of you who get texts or emails from me the first person because they're all time stamped so the first person who can tell me the real story of Juneteenth I will send you a gift you have to include your mailing address because it's a physical gift it's not a it's not a um you know, download or something like that. But yeah, that's my challenge. That's my Juneteenth challenge. Well, you know, Oprah, while you're giving out cars, what are you saying now? You get a car and you get a you car. Get a get gift. Too. You get a gift too. You get a gift. I'm gonna make sure I get myself on that list. If I get my get Mr. My, Hope, my you are gift. eligible. And I hate I hate it when they have those contests and employees of the company are not eligible. You are eligible, Mr. Hope. So well, I'll be eligible, but I, I think I want to just make sure I'll stand back if I have the answer. And let those <laughs> who are participating take advantage, you know, so we can include everybody in, in the gift. All right. So yes, thank you all for joining us today. Um, the replay will be on YouTube. So listen, I've been sending the replay links as a rule, but also I have sent you the playlist links so if you dig back into your and i'll do it again of course I'll, I'll do it again i'd like to ask a question if possible sure okay, sorry okay. about that I, kind of kind of late in the game here but um i was struggling to try to get myself unmuted um oh, sorry. who is yeah, this so i've been a little I, my name is jennifer thomason i'm Hi, on jennifer. the west coast yeah yeah how are you guys today hi jennifer good to hear from you hi yeah, yeah, I, I'm meaning to reach out to you, Terrence, and, and just decided to hop on the call first because the timing cool. worked out for me. And, and I've really enjoyed uh, this time listening to you guys and all of the information. Um, very informative and, you know, just really goes along with a whole lot of, you know, everything that I'm already, you know, mindsets that I'm, I'm already, uh, that I'm in myself. So I just, you know, I don't, I've been out of the loop a little bit. I don't know if you guys have touched on this and other calls, but, you know, since the information was heavily weighted on pharmaceuticals today, I'm just wondering, you guys, the, the two of you as individuals, how do you relate and correlate um, this pharmaceutical discussion to the vaccine discussion, especially and specifically the current um, vaccine that, that's being pushed in the world? 
Good question. Um, thus far, <laughs> thus far, we haven't actually taken on the vaccine um, uh, conversation here on the. On Actually, the I have. Have we? <clears throat> oh yeah. Right. We'll start with you. <laughs> if you look at our call topics log. Okay. Um, I discussed vaccines in general, and I know you said specifically, Jennifer. Um, in general, on it was a Wednesday. It was a worldwide Wednesday. It was a World Health uh, Day, like a World International Health Day or something. I don't know. I'll find the number. Mm. But um, <clears throat> vaccines in general, uh, we discussed multi actually a few times, but mostly on that call. Okay. This particular vaccine, uh, this particular worldwide everything, we started discussing in January of 2020. If I remember, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it was it was January, and we started tracking the tracker and you know following stuff like that. But um, you know this vaccine in particular is a whole nother animal. Um, but in there are some principles that are still true. For instance, this vaccine, as in the other vaccine, does not kill COVID. And a lot of people think it does, but it does not. Your immune system has to be functioning in order for a vaccine to work. Your immune system has to be functioning <clears throat> in order to, uh, so what does a vaccine do? A vaccine um, sets up the manufacturing plant in your body for antibodies to be made to an offender. Now, normally, <clears throat> your body has a way to identify offenders. And if the offenders are not eliminated by the early forces, um, then the special forces get the message and, and that a manufacturing plant has to be set up. We need some antibodies specifically for this offender. We can't handle it just with the general white blood cells and uh, you know polymorphonucleocytes and uh, whatnot, the macrophages, the general cells. So they need specific cells that are targeted specifically for that offender. So that takes time normally in the body. What the vaccines do is they speed up the, the manufacturing plant being built so that when, if and when, there's another exposure, then the antibodies get pumped out right away and the body starts to fight um, the enemy that's invading. Mm. Um, but again, your immune system has to be functioning and has to be intact. It has to be nourished and supported in order for those two phases to work. In order for the manufacturing plant to be set up, that's the first step. And then the second step in order for the plasma cells to start pumping out specific antibodies. That's not gonna happen properly if your immune system is not fully nourished and supported. We don't so know what we don't know about this vaccine. Mm. And so I don't feel completely comfortable commenting on all of the other ramifications that are or that could be part of it. We have done, uh, we've done call, we've done calls about nanoparticles. We've done calls about, um, nan we've done calls about nanoparticles in foods. We've done calls about nanoparticles in baby formulas and uh, the interaction of nanoparticles with uh, electromagnetic radiation. Um, you know, and like we give you the basic. We give you the science and you can, we don't necessarily uh, tie all the, or, or connect all the dots for you. But um, if you get our call topics log, it had, you have one click access to all of our previous 300 and, you know, 
plus calls, 400 today with, um, it's a treasure trove of information, I believe. And I'm tooting That's my own horn, Vernita. <laughs> uh -huh. That's interesting. A, a question on that, on that then. So um, a traditional vaccine's job is to trigger the immune system. Um, of course, the immune system has got to be, you have to have the right food substance in your body. You have to have proper nutrition for an immune reaction to occur healthy properly. A contrast between a traditional vaccine and what this present shot is would be two different things. Or there was oh, yeah. information about the present shot that we just don't know, but it's not it's not a traditional vaccine as as one should, would 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 hope, I guess, or think it is. Yeah, the the mRNA technology we've never seen that before. Um, the nanoparticles, whatever that uh, takes, you know, whatever implication that has, we've never, to my knowledge, right? We've never seen that before. Um, a lot of things we have, the, the uh, embryonic cell, cell lines, we have seen before. So it's, but this is a new, this is a new thing. And we won't know, I think for years, what the implications are of getting of, this of, vaccine. Of getting, getting this shot. So, so for, I guess, <clears throat> decades, there have been a traditional approach to vaccinations uh, to boost the immune system. And the present shot that has been given for COVID is not of the same dynamic. It's new. And it's new. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. the virus is new. The vaccine is new. Right. The tests and, and are new. <laughs> the tests are new. Yeah, and it's interesting how, how everything is brand new on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a virus. Um, the virus can certainly be, be killed in various ways. Um, so, you know, why is this any different than any other? Why, 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 why wouldn't we just trigger the immune system to be boosted to handle a, to handle a virus and, and, and instead create something that's not the same as a previous vaccine? Or can we even call it a vaccine if its job is not to kill a COVID virus? So what's the job point of it? Well, there's no, no, there's no, no vaccine has a job to kill the- A specific, but it's, it's designed to boost the immune system so the immune system can take care of itself. Right. That should be the idea, I guess. Right. But we're not getting that in this case. So mm, what it is- I'm, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure. I think we're getting that and more. I think we're getting that and more. And we don't know what the more, whether exactly. the more will be beneficial or not. Hmm. Does that start to answer your question, Jennifer? Well, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I certainly, especially at this late in the game, I didn't expect you to go into, you know, too much timely, timely information. But, you know, just touching on it, and it sounds like, you know, kind of on the same page that I think I'm on. I, you know, it, it, to me, it just kind of goes back to the, the whole, you know, the pharmaceutical industry as a whole. I believe that um you know like you're saying we're not even sure you know if this vaccine is really going to do any good and we're especially not sure what kind of harm it's going to take years before we will know that and so you know that i have a huge concern about that as i do with any pharmaceutical you know you can take you can talk about um you, you know medications that are given for um, what they're labeling as mental health issues, you know, people who have depression or anxiety or, you know, something to that effect, well, it might give them initial relief from what bothers them, but you find a lot of people saying things like, but I didn't feel like myself or, you know, there's these other things, you know, well, I couldn't sleep, but, you know, all these other harmful aspects to the medication. And I feel like that's probably the biggest concern my, my biggest concern about vaccines in general, but especially this, the, the current vaccine is, you know, is what the vaccine is supposed to do, whether it does it or not, is what it's supposed to do really worth all of the other things it does as well. Does that make sense? It does. Is the juice worth the squeeze? 
Well said, and I guess we'll we will see. Unfortunately, or the jab. <laughs> you know, and and much of what you talked about is something that's happening on a regular basis with the um, with this um, is it called allopathic approach to medicine, um, where um, you know too often harm is allowed um, as part of harm what will be yeah. what will be considered to be the the the, the healing process. Um, of course, you know we're supposed to say first do no harm. Um, and just too often, it's accepted Except that well, one has to get sick. To, one has to get sick to get better. Um, and uh, I, I would like to take a look at these herbal uh, encyclopedias and see if that is the case on their side. Um, you know, does one have to get sick to get better? Does one have to risk other illnesses? And so, it's, it's, I, I find it very questionable. There yeah, was another I mean, question. Yeah, there's sorry, no, there's no, you know, like you said, there's really no accountability. Nobody's held responsible for the harm. It's, it's considered acceptable, um, you know, and, 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 and part of that comes from, you know, because as a society, we allow that and we, and we accept it and we've been trained, we, you know, we've been, you know, basically programmed and trained to expect such immediate results and of every aspect of our lives. We're in such a hurry all the time for everything and for every result. And when you talk about taking a more um, uh, natural approach to your health, it doesn't happen quickly. And that's the problem. We're in too big of a hurry. We don't want to give our bodies the time to do what the, our bodies were intended to do to begin with. And we're not trusting our own bodies and having enough faith in our own bodies to be able to do those things you know, because we've been programmed to believe that um, we can only trust and rely on those who are in quote unquote authoritative positions, such as, you know, doctors and the people that give them their labels, you know, um, you know, not that's been good. To, to, I, believe, I believe to our detriment. I, I oftentimes agree that I, I think that the concept of having to be harmed you know, in the process of being better. And then of course, what we really see are chronic illnesses, uh, and people are on uh, are ill for the rest of their lives once they receive a diagnosis, um, and they 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 get no recovery. They get more medications to deal with the other effects that the initial pharmaceutical caused, you know. But you know, if they got diagnosed at the age of thirty five, they're looking for another looking at another fifty years if they live that long on these medications and the detrimental effects that these things have on them long-term. So that's always very concerning to me personally, um, pharmaceutical approaches, allopathic approaches. Uh, you know, I like to see the immune system boosted, but I don't want to see anything added to it that would cause harm. So we get to that same word here, the causing of harm and its acceptance, I find to be unacceptable, healing first. Right, right. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I certainly don't want anybody to think that, you know, I'm a caller calling in who has some kind of a you know, thinks that all, oh, all doctors are bad or anything to that effect. I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of doctors, you know, like you talked about earlier, if I need a bone set, I'm super stoked that there's someplace I can go to have that done. Somebody who knows what they're doing and can do it, you know, correctly. Um, oh, yeah. Also for, you know, also to, for help with diagnosis, you know, maybe I'm not going to choose to use a pharmaceutical approach or a pharmaceutical treatment, but I might need help with knowing you know, a diagnosis so that I can then turn, you know, to the information for more natural approaches to what it is that ails me, you know, I, so it, I, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I don't want anybody to yeah. that I just, you know, oh, no, no, oh, it's, 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 <laughs> it, it's fine and it's understandable. I mean, and then of course there are diagnostic tools available in uh, Europe and overseas that are less invasive than those that are done uh, here in the US mm -hmm. and Canada and actually much more accurate. Um, you know, but all these things we'd like to get to the point where we have things that are beneficial for our health, um, that we get what we need, uh, that what we're getting is tried and true. Um, and that um, first, we're not harmed. Second, we, 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 we receive healing. And you know, maybe thirdly, we live a lifestyle that keeps us healthy at all times without the attack of viruses and anything else coming along. So, um, so I wanna show, um, the, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you. Thank, thank both of you for, for all you guys do. Welcome to the family. To, to disease calls and, and whatnot. So I want to show everyone um, 
as we go. <laughs> I told you, Mr. Hope, no more two hour calls. Yeah, we better get out of here. Bro. <laughs> but um, when you go to YouTube, right? So this is, I'm in the YouTube playlist for Condon Water Radio now. So yeah. all of our videos are here. But when you go to YouTube um, on a desktop, uh, it starts to show uh, the description area and you click on show more. Now on your phone, it's a little different. You have to, there's a little carrot that points down right over here and you click on that carrot. And that's the same thing that happens as show more. And when you click on show more, you get the call, art, the articles I use for that call. You get the resources that we re refer to very frequently on this call and you get all of our contact information. So um, I encourage you to go to YouTube, Search Congan Water Nation, and you'll find our um, channel. But looks like that searches Congan Water Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can read. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Congan Water Radio. <laughs> and you search on our channel, Congan Water Radio. But also, but look for our playlist because you can view the full playlist. And we've got now 21, I think this will make 22 of our calls um, are audiovisual, like on, on, on YouTube. And the, all the previous calls are audio, but they are all available. And the link to those previous calls is in that description area. So you can go right to it. All righty. Right on. Awesome. So we are out the door. Yes? We're out of here. So we will see you with call number 401 on Wednesday. Oh my goodness. We're in the 400s, Mr. Hope. Congratulations. Awesomeness. And remember, uh, Congo Water Radio Zoom link is for our Saturday calls. Um, I'd like to see us eventually merge the two. And there's a different um, link actually for the Wednesday call. Uh, you know but uh, you'll see. Mm, so we'll have to merge. So, but. Um, if right now, every Saturday, Con Water Radio Zoom link will lead you here. Um, 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the USA, 6 p.m. in the United Kingdom, uh, 10.30 p.m. in India, 9 p.m. in Dubai, uh, 6 p.m. in Angola and Nigeria, 7 p.m. in South Africa, um, 10 a.m. Uh, on the West Coast. Pacific time. Uh, and um, that's all I know about that for now. So uh, we look forward to seeing you all again here on the Congo Water Health and Information Call, where we, of course, talk about Congo Water. You know, today, we focus so much on, on health and um, you know, let you understand different aspects of nutrition and things that are involved. Um, and as <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let us get out of here because I know we've been here forever. You know, but uh, I got lost. Where am I? I can't find you my have way the back to power, Zoom. Mr. Hope. Yes, Only I'm trying you. to find my way. I can't find my way back to Zoom. What the hell? What happened? Only you can end forest fires. <laughs> right. If I can just get back to our Zoom chat, which I don't seem to be able to. Um, How about if I screen share now? Okay, I think I'm finding my way. I'm back. Okay. Okay. So um, we thank you all for coming to the Congo Water Health and Information Call. We've uh, had a great time talking about uh, health dynamics and health issues. Uh, we are certainly glad to be here for you uh, every uh, Saturday. And again, uh, we'll have to give out the separate link for the Wednesday call, but every Saturday uh, on the Congo Water Radio Program. And um, we'll see you uh, next time. Congo Water, electrolyzed reduced water. Drink it for your health, antioxidant, hydrating, detoxing, excellent for your body and health. Um, come again, tell your friends, and, uh, and be well. What more is it to say? <laughs> Cheers. All the best. Yeah, right. If I can get us out, let's see. Here we go. Take care, everyone. <laughs>